Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. We have a standard ammunition test today. Our flavor of choice is 300 AAC Blackout or 762 by 35. I don't think anybody really calls it that. This is from Sergeant Major. This is a Tula or Tool brand. 125 grain full metal jacket with a brass case. We'll throw him on the table and talk about what we're gonna do today. In full transparency, I purchased this ammunition myself from Palmetto State Armory. I actually bought it and they oversold it and they swapped this out with some ammo ink. So I waited for this to come back in stock to pick up. But we have three barrel lengths that we like to use for 300 blackout. We have a seven and a half inch, a 10 and a half inch, and then a 16 for our extreme. That's good for our supersonic cartridges to see what kind of velocity we can get out of it. We have a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX at 12 feet. I forgot to record the intro for this particular ammunition review, so I'm doing it now. So if the background looks slightly different weather-wise, it this is on a different date. For all of my ammunition reviews, we're pretty much just giving you a velocity breakdown with the standard deviation and extreme spread over our different barrel lengths. And then we're gonna do a practical accuracy test and then give you just some closing thoughts and prayers and send you on your merry way. Up first, we'll start with our shortest barrel length, which is our seven and a half inch upper from Palmetto State Armory. Got an our SBR lower. Got a Trijicon MRO up top, a Yankee Hill single port, Kurs muzzle brake out front. Turn the MRO on, that would help. It was 1892, I'm not sure if you can read the screen or not today. I am noticing a little bit of muzzle flash off this in the daytime. Getting a decent ejection pattern off of that. We got locked back on the last round. Not bad. port. And now on to our 10 and a half inch. We have a Yankee Hill three port QD muzzle brake up front. Got the Primary Arms Gen 1 Cyclops up top, Radeon LT Ambidextrous Charging Handle, Battle Arms Ambidextrous Safety Selectors, Mission First Tactical Pistol Grip, and our Cuck Lower, our NBC from PSA. Running the KCI Korean PMAGs. Didn't detect any muzzle flash that time out of the longer barrel. Still getting locked back, not too shabby. Since this is 300 blackout, I wanna shoot it suppressed and I found the best way to stop getting burned in the face with blowback gases on our AR pistols is just to run a gas mask. We've got our Mira Safety 7M gas mask right here that we kinda of do a review on, just pretty much messing with it because I have a limited experience with gas masks, but so far these things are pretty neat. Got a JK Armament rifle kit up front still on our 10 and a half inch upper. And look at that, absolutely no gas to the face and my eyes are not crying. And finally, our 16 inch, again, another Palmetto State Army build. We have a Yankee Hill single port QD Kurs muzzle brake up front. Got the MRO back on here, Radeon ambidextrous charging handle, our battle arms, ambi safety selector and mission first tactical pistol grip and butt stock. This is on the Virginia 15 lower. I think PSA sold those a little while ago to help support one of the political funds in Virginia against some of the anti-gun legislation. Looks like we're getting a nice jump in velocity over the 10 and a half inch.
not too bad. I think I have maybe a heavy buffer in this lower. I think I got an H2 in there. I'll have to measure it. Our ejection pattern is a little to the front, and I want to be more at the three to four o'clock position, but otherwise, we still got lock back on that, so not too shabby. Here is our Sergeant Major 125 grain full metal jacket. We're running the 10 and a half inch pistol upper with an Arcan Optics 24 power first focal plane scope on there. There's a little bit of wind today. It's 40 degrees, but nothing terrible. This was our get on the paper group at 2.323 inches. That's not bad. I haven't gotten very good 300 blackout results in the past, so I was curious if that was typical at 100 yards or if we're just kind of breaking in the barrel. And then our second group with our JK Armament Rifle Kit, 1.673 inches. I will definitely not complain about that. Well, that concludes another standard ammunition test out here at the range. Our Sergeant Major, aka Tula 125 grain full metal jacket, didn't do too bad. It was actually the most accurate of the three loads that I tested today. I tested that, the 150 grain ammo ink, and a 110 grain tipped lead free from S&B. That was actually the worst, so I'm not sure if there was a combination of the twist rate and barrel length that it didn't like, so I'll have to come back on a different day and test that. But our Sergeant Major was the most accurate. I like that it's range friendly. There are certain ranges that ban not only steel case ammunition because they don't want to sort it and pick it up, but they also ban any kind of bullets that have a bimetal jacket that attract a magnet. Now this box does say made in Russia and post 2022 supposedly all Russian ammunition has been banned from import in the United States so if there's you know however the import permits work once those run out we may never see this particular load again so if you happen to see some and you like what you saw result wise here today I definitely wouldn't hesitate to pick some up. With all that being said it's time for me to get the heck out of here. At the end of all my videos I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters, I'm talking a little too fast, and number two is you all for watching. Until next time I'll catch you at the range. Thank you.